Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Deng Xiaoping, 1904-1997, powerful figure in Republic of China. Deng Xiaoping, Wei Giles Romanization Ting Xia Panji, born August 22, 1904, Guangin, Sichuan Province, China, died February 19, 1997, Beijing, Chinese Communist leader who was the most powerful figure in the People's Republic of China from the late 1970s until his death in 1997. He abandoned many Orthodox Communist doctrines, and attempted to incorporate elements of the free enterprise system, and other reforms into the Chinese economy. Deng was the son of a landowner and studied in France, 1920-24, where he became active in the communist movement, and in the Soviet Union, 1925-26. He then returned to China, and later became a leading political and military organizer in the Jiangxi Soviet, an autonomous communist enclave in southwestern China that had been established in 1931 by Mao Zedong. Read through the quotes and thoughts by Deng Xiaoping. It doesn't matter if a cat is black or white, so long as it catches mice. Seek truth from facts. The United States brags about its political system, but the president says one thing during the election, something else when he takes office, something else at midterm and something else when he leaves. Keep a cool head and maintain a low profile. Never take the lead but aim to do something big. We must firmly grasp management. Just making things isn't enough. We need to raise the quality. Reform is China's second revolution. Let some people get rich first. When our thousands of Chinese students abroad return home, you will see how China will transform itself. Do not debate is one of my inventions. There is oil in the Middle East, there is rare earth in China. No matter to what degree China opens up to the outside world and admits foreign capital, its relative magnitude will be small and it can't affect our system of socialist public ownership of the means of production. Cross the river by feeling for stones. Be reasonable with the students and make sure they see the logic in what we're doing. Poverty is not socialism. To be rich is glorious. In China, we intend to acquire advanced technology, science and management skills to serve our socialist production. And these things as such have no class character. A fundamental contradiction does not exist between socialism and a market economy. China is not a superpower, nor will she ever seek to be one. If one day China should change her color and turn into a superpower, if she too should play the tyrant in the world, and everywhere subject others to her bullying, aggression and exploitation, the people of the world should identify her as social imperialist, expose it oppose it and work together with the Chinese people to overthrow it. Observe calmly, secure our position, cope with affairs calmly, hide our capacities and bide our time, be good at maintaining a low profile, and never claim leadership. Absorbing foreign capital and technology and even allowing foreigners to construct plants in China can only play a complementary role to our effort to develop the productive forces in a socialist society. Of course, this will bring some decadent capitalist influences into China. We are aware of this possibility, it's nothing to be afraid of. We mustn't fear to adopt the advanced management methods applied in capitalist countries. The very essence of socialism is the liberation and development of the productive systems. Socialism and market economy are not incompatible. 
we should be concerned about right-wing deviations, but most of all, we must be concerned about left-wing deviation. Chairman Mao's greatest contribution was that he applied the principles of Marxism-Leninism to the concrete practice of the Chinese Revolution, pointing the way to victory. It should be said that before the 60s or the late 50s many of his ideas brought us victories, and the fundamental principles he advanced were quite correct. We should not lay all past mistakes on Chairman Mao. So we must be very objective in assessing him. His contributions were primary, his mistakes secondary. In China, we will inherit the many good things in Chairman Mao's thinking while at the same time explaining clearly the mistakes he made. Not only did Mao Zedong thought lead us to victory in the revolution in the past, it is, and will continue to be, a treasured possession of the Chinese Communist Party and of our country. I would be quite content if I myself could be rated 50-50 in merits and demerits. But one thing I can say for myself, I have had a clear conscience all my life. But it can be said that I made my mistake with good intentions. There is nobody who doesn't make mistakes. We no longer know what socialism is, or how to get there, and yet it remains the goal. When you open window both flies and air come in. If you don't have something to say, keep your mouth shut, the purpose of meetings and talks is to solve problem. I hate niggers. I dislike coons. I absolutely despise darkies. Productive is also a kind of revolution, of a very important kind. The development of the productive forces is the most fundamental revolution, from the point of view of historical development. That is why we will forever keep Chairman Mao's portrait on Tiananmen Gate as a symbol of our country, and we will always remember him as a founder of our party and state. Moreover, we will adhere to Mao Zedong thought. We will not do to Chairman Mao what Khrushchev did to Stalin. Please mark my words, I have made quite a few mistakes, and I have my own share of responsibility for some of the mistakes made by Comrade Mao Zedong. But it can be said that I made my mistake with good intentions. There is nobody who doesn't make mistakes.